Good morning and welcome to the Level Up Business and Life podcast. I am Travis Scott here with my co-host Ethan Stewart. Hey everybody, welcome to Level Up Business and Life podcast. Uh, we welcome a special guest today, Seth Mason. He's a local entrepreneur, runs uh, Seth Socks and uh, eSports in this area. He's a young rock star entrepreneur that uh, started early, saw the opportunity and and uh, jumped right on board, so we're excited to talk to him. Yeah, that's exciting. He's he started at in, in high school. This yeah. is where his ideas started developing. Yeah, which never too young, man. You're never too young. That's exciting. It really is. Mm-hmm. So before we jump in with Seth, what what, what what all do you have going on here at Eight One Four Works? So Eight One Four Works always has some stuff going on. Uh, we're running our financial fitness class, and that's going and. It's been uh, going for the past uh, few weeks. It's going really well. So we'll be looking to start getting some more subscribers and uh, interested parties for the next uh, rendition. Uh, we have our next uh, uh, educational seminar this on the 22nd, which is a couple of next week, where uh, we'll have a QuickBooks uh, expert coming in and actually doing some hand-on training for anybody who wants to learn uh, QuickBooks and do QuickBooks, learn to learn how to keep your books, which is incredibly important. Yeah, absolutely. Then from there, there's more stuff in the works, but we won't uh, be announcing that quite yet, but uh, there is some good stuff happening. So, yeah. 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 What about you? What do you have going on? So, with the Young Professionals, we've got the, was it April 11th? We are meeting with the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown Business Club. Mm-hmm and doing a networking event with them to bring them and hopefully try to retain some young talent in the area as things, as things have been growing, which, which is really exciting. Yeah. Um, as young professionals, we just moved uh, under the chamber, uh, under the chambers, the Cambria, Cambria Regional Chambers regime, if you will, uh, to try to have a, a larger impact on the business community. And we've got some really cool networking ideas, uh, one of which is a mentor speed dating. So that's really neat. So it's basically um, a few C-level executives decide to uh, commit themselves to one year of mentoring and all that to one person. So there's a whole matching system that goes on with the speed dating. and, And then you just pair each other up and then while you have the mentors you also have the the board the chambers board teaching people how to be on a board and possibly help with some of their subcommittees so it's really neat how you know that you know how things work you don't understand like these aren't things that that people taught you in high school right Mm -hmm. these are things that you have to learn on your own, really. It's kind of, sometimes it's trial by fire. Sometimes, sometimes you get burnt. Sometimes you, you just you kind of throw yourself in the ring and do your best. But ultimately, you know, that's all volunteering. Um, in with Treventures Media, I am currently working on my sales and personal brand training. Working with, ooh. Um, building a program it's a Facebook Messenger program called Recover Chat. Recover Chat is a Facebook Messenger chat bot that helps recovering addicts, um, alcohol or narcotics, locate meetings. It's as simple as that. It's a it's a meeting finder. So working with uh, the Cambria County Drug Drug Free Coalition and as well as the uh, similar group in Somerset and trying to Make a bigger splash, right? So, those are some of the main things that I've got going on. Anything I missed there? You... No, no, sounds good, man. Let's just dive right in. I'm interested in uh, starting to talk to Seth. Yeah, let's pull Seth up here. Welcome, Seth. Hello, hello. And we've got Seth. Yeah, there we go. Get get Seth in the picture there. Uh, yeah. All right, buddy. <laughs> so, Seth. Started Seth Socks in year? Uh, 2013. 2013? Yeah. Oh, so you've been at this a while now. Yeah, yep. Yeah, still in high school, so yeah, now I'm 20 years old. So. Well, tell us, uh, tell us your story, man. How'd you, uh, you have a really interesting story of how you found, uh, you know, found 
the opportunity one after it. Yeah, the awesome. mark, yeah, the Nike Elite marker, really. Um, that's what exploded. All the kids were wearing, you know, the athletic socks, basketball, or any sports really. It was, it was crazy. That was when I was a freshman in high school. Um, then I had it, got a pair for Christmas that same year. Um, my mom, you know, she, like I told you guys earlier, she caved in, but my dad, yeah, you know, it's always been fun. My dad, you know, he shut down the idea you know, right, right from the start. Right. So, I always you know, teasing about that still to this day. So, yeah, we started and, um, my parents, they have a screen printing and embroidery, um, company. And they've been doing that for over 20 years. So we had the machines to kind of mess around and play with yeah. it. So, uh, we tested it in our garage. That's where one of our machines were. My dad just got it. Um, probably took, probably took a week of testing to finally get like the, the model down and like mm-hmm. how we're going to do it with the process. And yeah. I'll never forget that text, uh, in school, probably like 8 a.m., you know, send me a picture of like this crappy looking sock, but you know, it, it looked good, you know, because we finally did. We finally figured out the process of how we're doing it. So uh, I got my dad's eBay account. So he used to sell sporting goods. Uh, so he built up a bunch of feedback on eBay. So he had good positive ratings. Um, yeah. So we listed our very first pair, um, Nike Elite socks. It was like this um, ocean sunset design. Uh, we sold for $54 on eBay. So that's when I'm really new. Okay. Nice. We're on, you know, this is, yeah. this could be potentially huge yeah. market wise as well. It's exploding. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we really built our foundation on eBay before, we, you know, obviously got really saturated and now eBay has a really, really bad reputation lately for like scam and all that. So mm-hmm. that's why we were really eBay started it all. You know, we were, I remember getting excited selling five a day, um, and all of a sudden going up to 10 a day, like getting really exciting. And then, um, the transition really from eBay, um, to Amazon was crazy. So that's really took off Amazon. So yeah. people give Amazon a bad rap all the time, but it helps young, entrepreneurs or small business owners really reach a global audience. Yeah. Um, that's when we were selling 30 day, 40 day. Yeah. And then Christmas time, it gets insane. Yeah. You know, thousands, hundreds a day, you know, I remember right. four, 500, or, um, 500 orders a day. We just shut it down. We just couldn't keep up with orders. So again, I mean, yeah, shut it, it down. People give Amazon a bad rap, but it's, it's a huge platform for mm-hmm. anyone because yeah. anyone can go really. I mean, as long as you're an established business, you have some experience selling some other platforms or um, brick and mortar, mm-hmm. you can get on Amazon and get approved and you're reaching That's millions right. of people. Yeah. I'm curious, how did you, um, how, how did you know to go about that? Like, test it on eBay first. How did you know the, the business process of, okay, you got the, the sock, you figured out how to, you know, print on it. Where do I sell it? Most people don't really know that next step. How yeah. So my, my parents have, um, experience selling on eBay, like they used to have a sporting goods store. So my dad, nice. my parents, they're used to selling stuff on the internet and eBay. So my dad was like really a connoisseur of that, yeah. that era, you know, that early e-commerce era. So right. he, that's what he recommended. You know, without my parents' help, yeah, obviously wouldn't be. How today. how was your how how old are your parents? My parents, they are fifty one now. Okay, so yeah, okay. It sounds like they're kind of entrepreneurial themselves. Yeah, so yeah, my mom's small business, twenty years. My dad worked for the state. Um, was over 10 years, mm-hmm. so worked at Penn Dot upper management. Left that, um, benefits, everything, took the risk to help my mom grow her business, and it's paid off ever nice. since. So, yeah, it was a huge, huge yeah. risk taking. Gave up for his retirement, everything, just yeah. to help my mom grow her business. Family business are, businesses are a great thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, and, you know, in most cases these days, parents are very scared when their kids tell them that they want to start their own business. I know, I know my whole family, you know, until I started really showing them, Hey, this is what I'm doing. And this is like kind of burn the boat. Like your dad did with Penelope. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really the hard thing. But for you coming out of high school, pretty smooth transition. Yeah. Because you had that kind of support, but still that's, that's a huge, you know, the fact that, your mom is, is texting you a picture of this mangled sock that, that they sent over, you know, the first one, right? Do you frame it? Uh, yeah, I still have it. Do you? And I still have the very original Good. pair that I got. You have to. Christmas, yeah. You know, it's, you know you, business, is a, business is a series of mistakes. Right. And, you know, that was your first one. But then, you you know, not that not the sock in, you know, in itself, but the... The actual product, right? Yeah. It, it, and the process, was, the trial error, yeah. that's all. And you're not right. going to succeed 100% of the time. Right. And a lot of people get discouraged in days too. And they, they put something online and sell right away or, you know, yeah. customers don't come through that door right away. They get yeah, discouraged. It's not the right customer. Yeah. 
It was interesting though that your dad had the entrepreneurial bug, but then he was like trying to squash the idea of a pair of socks. He had his doubts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was just like, "Why would you want to spend forty dollars on a pair of yeah, socks?" Really? Yeah. yeah, that's what he was like, really questioning. So yeah, that's that's interesting because like like uh, Travis saying, yeah, a lot of times parents are a little hesitant. I know my parents were when I was first talking about what I was uh, what I was working on. They're supportive, but you know, everybody's like, yeah, "You sure you want to do that and not do something more, you know, consistent?" But um, but as an entrepreneurial family, you think that there'd be like a you know board. But actually, the ones that I've heard, it's it's funny the the ones that the entrepreneur parents and when they hear that their kid is thinking about starting something up, they're actually a little more hesitant because they know what it takes. You know, they know what it what yeah they went through. So they're like, right. as a parent, you don't necessarily want your kid to go through all that stuff. But it's awesome to hear that you guys are all on the same page now. Though. Yeah, and I grew up in a. My- Mom's business, I really learned probably from when I was yeah. like 10 or 11. Like, we print shirts, like, we after school, sort shirts, count them, box them, and you know, sure. I processed my parents were really open with the finances and how much stuff costs. And I was learning this all at you know, middle school age, mm-hmm. learn all this profit, loss, that's, that's where you need labor to be. work, that's you where know, you need to learn that value your There's time. So, yeah, that's where I really learned. I was a step ahead of everyone else, really learning would you, information. Would you yeah. say you were always like kind of a, you always knew you were going to be an entrepreneur? You're always going to start um, Yeah, I think that's why my parents were really open, you know, with yeah. the finances at a young age because they saw my interest in, in business and mm-hmm. entrepreneur and, and you know, the, the money aspect and the risk taking and everything else yeah. because obviously. Business is risk. Every day is a risk. You don't know. Right. You could just shut off right now. Your customers could never come back. You know, so it's, yeah. and you know, that's the small business side of it. You have to provide for your whole family too. So you're relying on every single order and make mm-hmm. sure nothing gets messed up right. because you're losing money for every, you know, everybody. There's no one getting a salary at the end of the day. It's, right. it's up to you guys to make it work. Right. So right. I love that. We love that too. So yeah, a grind effect as well. So yeah, that's kind of the, it sounds like you're, you you have a competitive nature. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like um, I played like high school athletics. Yeah. Um, and never really like brought that competitive side. I don't mean like the athletics, but like business. Yeah. Well, I well I say that because I see the competitiveness and like you're not necessarily competing with someone. You're competing with yourself. Yeah. yeah. In, in in business because that all relies on you, right? The bring home that that dollar yeah. at the end of the day, <clears throat> that all lands on your shoulders. So deal, you know, you're competing against where you were at yesterday. Right. Right. Yeah, and you're always trying to get better every day and increase yeah. your orders and make more money because yeah. that's the goal you don't want to. Yeah. So let's talk about revenue stream. So you said Amazon. Yeah, Amazon no, um, no. is the number one stream. Where, where are you, that, that's your number one stream? Yeah. Even right saying, now? Yep. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, and then, um, my website, it's uh, setsofts.com. Uh, we sell in there. Uh, Etsy is huge. Okay. Um, and then eBay. Uh, we don't really sell on eBay anymore just because it is so saturated. With everybody, just anyone can hop on eBay and right. start selling. And the Amazon, you have to go through the approval process. And then we're also on Walmart. So we're approved seller on walmart.com. Nice. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. And That's then um, just due to our sales volume on Amazon, mm-hmm. we're like, we're approved in Walmart in like 48 hours, which is unheard of. Wow. Because they really go through the process of making sure that you're a legit seller. So, because oh, they're obviously their reputation is going to Walmart. So, yeah. So, are are you getting into Walmart retail as well? Uh, no, not right now. Okay. The only retail location we have is in the Galleria Mall, and it's just like a little kiosk. But we do have some plans of possibly franchising okay. in, the, in the malls, getting some you know, brick and mortar stores as well. Yeah. Sales. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of franchising, so you have another business as well. Yeah, so esports. So you might have heard of Altoona Gaming or, yeah, Altoona Gaming here in the Gallery and Mall. I started that okay. um, last year, so last March. Yeah. So that's, it, so that's a, like you walk in and what's the experience like? Yeah, so it's, uh, right now it's $5 an hour and then $10 for an all day pass. You can do, uh, you know, play all the hottest games. So right now we have pretty much every game, sports games, you know, Fortnite, Apex, Legends, everything really mainstream. Um, we also have like virtual reality come in and play. So yeah, it's just a gamer. Or a gamer How many VR machines do you have? Uh, we only have one right now. Have one. Yeah. So, so for the everybody listening that doesn't necessarily know, could you describe what like esports is and why you decided to get into that business? Yeah, it's just like uh, esports is competitive gaming. So just like how um, there's varsity football, mm-hmm. same aspect applies for esports. Just two teams facing off in a game uh, competitively. 
yeah. you know, playing for them. We've, we're really going to start developing at a high school level because local colleges now are offering scholarships for esports. Oh, I see. So, them. yeah, Robert Morris is one of the first ones ever to do it back in, I think, 2014. Um, St. Francis just contacted me. They were doing their program starting 2020, yeah. 2021. So, it's coming here in the local area, so I want to really get the, the high school foundation built. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit of a gamer. I play Rocket League. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was watching, they had the, the one night, they had, I think it was on Twitch, they had Rocket League championships. Oh, yeah. But it was the co- like college. So, it was like, it, you know, it was laid out like a fo- like football or a hockey, really. Cause it was, or, or, yeah, I think they were playing hockey or soccer, one or two. But it was laid out like a soccer match. Yeah. And you had, it was three or four on each team. And, like, it was, you know, University of Auburn versus, um, like, Florida State or something along those lines. I don't even know if Florida State have, have it, has a team. But... If regardless, yeah, that's how it was I, set I know. Up. Exa- I see exactly where this is going. I actually watched a documentary on NBA 2K. So with NBA 2K, like you create your own player, correct, and has all of these stats. But these, you know, it's obviously you're not going to have a giant that can you know shoot three points, you know, three pointers. You know, it has to be yeah, you have a bounce, yeah, you have an archetype they call it. So. Yeah, yeah. So you have an archetype and. They they play as you play as if you were you in the game. You just have one player, so it's not like you're put, you're managing a whole team. Right. And I think it was like three on threes or five. I think it was three five on five. Yeah. Five on fives. And so for the best player, so the winning team, each player got like a hundred grand. Yeah, they get paid salaries at the NBA. They yeah. get more. They get paid more than G League players. So they. Get, Really paid more to play video games than actually right. play real. That's well, one cat MVP, I think he made five hundred grand. Uh, so yeah, for yeah. all the haters out there, you can actually make money. Oh yeah, right? and yeah. Then you go to school. Like scholarships are happening now. It's yeah. going to only explode here in the next probably three to five years. Yeah, they're going to be full rise. Of school. I mean, Penn State. I know they won just over a hundred thousand dollars in scholarships last year from those big tournaments. So, so everybody locked in the rooms playing video games with the dream of one day making a career out of it. Reality. Yeah, and that's the whole point of the concept of the gaming yeah. center that we have in the gallery, too, to, to your point, is to really make it maybe not so isolating, yeah. maybe make it a community, well, like, um, yeah. a game where you get so new teammates. You're, at the not, you're not locked and, you know, into your basement. Yeah, you can really meet real people right. and share that common bond. And you can, log your, so you can log into, I would imagine yeah. you can log into yeah. these. Log in your own talent, yeah, bring in, we have you know, state-of-the-art equipment at yeah. the, so the facility. So. Well, what's the interesting about it, it's like, it's exploding, there's so many people. Fortnite, that, that's the one that I think of every time because it's no longer well known. One. It's like it's huge. It's yeah, ridiculous. It's the modern day Star Wars yeah. is what's going to be. So yeah, everyone knows about it. Everyone's heard of it. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. everyone's played it. Yeah, right. Everyone's watched it. So it's it's pretty crazy. People are suing them now. What yeah, are the it's how uh, big it is? Yeah, true, they already have people coming out. Well, yeah, it's that how big it is. The billions of right. dollars are bringing. The, people the, are the signature dance moves is yeah. what is what's really getting them. What um what is the what are the biggest games that you see people play like when they pop? It is for, yeah games? Fortnite. Um, right. Lately, Apex Legends has just came out. Um, that's a pretty popular game, but it's mostly been Fortnite, right. which has helped this um, gaming center concept because before mm-hmm. gaming centers they can't afford to pay sixty dollars for sixteen stations. It just didn't make financial sense. But Fortnite's free, so it helps the concept. So I got right. in at the right time in this business. Uh, like I said, last year was when I really started the. The concept for the gaming center, right? Um, yeah, I, I think it, that that you said how it's free, and that is a, a, a really crazy concept now because the Fortnite is making you know. I remember you know the one kid, a uh, um, family member. He was he like didn't even want to get paid in money. He wanted to get paid in V bucks. <laughs> yeah, buy like, skins and the day. that's how they make their money. Yeah, and it's, they, that model's taken over. We're really now a lot of games are want to go free and yep. have a, some sort of loot box or skin freemium. Yeah, freemium. That's right. Yeah, okay. you know, it's kind of it's that pay to play model because you're going to get them hooked with the free. It's right. going to entice them to play it. Right. Okay. Instead of sixty dollars, eh, then you forget about it. Right. Sixty dollars, but it's free. I'll download it. I'll yeah. try it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Then you're hooked. Then you're hooked. Yeah. And then you want to pay money. Oh, it's a free game. I'll spend ten bucks. I don't know how much I play. It's funny, uh, my uh, my little brother, uh, and well, me as well, we 
played as a League of Legends game once in a while. That's a that's a big one too. I have yeah, League of Legends. Um, so and then they have a model like you know, my bros and the other people I talk to. They'll make extra purchases because they they want to support the the uh, video game. They like playing the game, so they're like, yeah, I'll, I'll buy this. I'll spend some money so I can support things, which is interesting. Uh, and so there's like actually not only because you have that free. You try it out for free. You start building that community around it. You right. start building that that uh, culture on that feeling of I'm part of something, so I want to support that in some ways as well. Not not everybody thinks that way, but I mean, there's a lot of ways you can make money on okay. that. It's interesting. And that's why a lot of them are going free now because yeah. they realize that okay, it's the best way to reach is millions of people. Yeah. Instead of charging sixty dollars. Well, if you percent. have a fun addicting game, I mean, video games are addicting anyway, and well, some of the good video games are. So if you have a good one and you give it to them for free, all right, well, why wouldn't you pay some money to right. make sure you spend all the time playing yeah. and you get your fix, you know? <laughs> do you have a Twitch channel? Um, we do. So right now we got acquired, we just got acquired by American Esports. It's a company out of DC. Okay. Um, so we're going to be rebranding our whole gaming center in the Galleria. Um, so it's American Esports Johnstown is our Twitch channel. Um, our website's American Esports. You guys can check us out. Um, we're just in the process of getting everything established and yeah, yeah. operated, but, uh, we have a team of executives behind us at the top, and then we also have the younger people. So we have a basically we have the you know the business experience at the top, and then we have the esports experience at the bottom, which is me and some other guys. Yeah, um, that are really so it's a it's a great you know it's basically scenario that we have going that no other really company in the industry has. Yeah. So what did you say? What your website was? Amer- American Esports dot net. You can read about um, some of the team members there and what we got going on. We have six divisions. Um, Ranging from product services to game centers, uh, we're going to come up with a mobile app specifically for gaming. Yeah. So it's, that'll be launching here within the next few months. Okay. Um, we have the events tournaments division, so we also have some big plans here for Johnstown for a big event. Yeah, yeah, go into that. Um, yeah, so the event. Um, my goal was always, I told people this when we opened up here in in, in June, July, uh, here at the Galleria. I'm going to have a tournament, or a huge event here at the Johnstown Memorial. I told pretty much every person that came in there my goal last year or uh, mm-hmm. last uh, July. So I just got in talks with uh, Jari, Jose, he's really helped me out and get some connections here without him and be, yeah. be able to do this. Jose's today. my boy. Yeah, Jose, thanks you. Thank you, Jose. Thanks, um, Jose. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he really helped me get connections around here, set up some meetings and talk with some local you know, pe- people here in the community to get an event set up here. Yeah. Um, so we're looking here probably later in the summer, July, August, have a huge esports event, um, mm-hmm. probably a big Fortnite tournament. Um, so big, how, big dollar prize pool and how, how, how do you plan on um, you said about targeting like the high school crowds uh, how do you what's your uh, barrier of entry so to speak or you know how, how do you plan on getting in front of the local yeah so I have uh, some people that come in the gaming center that I you know, contacts with that are familiar with the schools have connections with the school and also Jose as well mm-hmm. um, it's really helping me get some connections with the school so once we get the new center up in the gallery that is happening in we're aiming right now for May 1st, have the 5,000 square foot, 32 station, state of the art center built um, and open, ready ready to go May 1st. Once that starts, I'm going to really push forward next fall to uh, presenting. I have a slideshow already you know, made and really touch on some of the important details of how esports can benefit the schools and also the, you know, the students is the main thing. And yeah. Build that community. Like I said, there's some kids that aren't athletically gifted that kind of feel left out in the, the sports scene. You know, get that recognition. Esports is a fantastic way for all those kids to be, yeah. you know, yeah. involved with the, the school spirit and sort. So, uh, I think really that's the is. biggest. It really is. And it's yeah. a, bond, a great bonding thing because yeah. if you love video games, it's a great way to make it's so easy. Yeah. I see it all the time with little eight year old, nine year old kids coming in here, no idea who they are. Mm-hmm. You know, they sit right next to each other. They're both playing Fortnite. Okay, so we like Fortnite. You want to play with it together? Yeah, let's hop in and do a, you know, yeah. do a game together. All of a sudden, right. they add each other. And they go home and play together. There yeah. you go. We just made new friends. So I see the concept right there. It's it's, it's already awesome. built. Yeah. It's, it's great. It great works. Community, uh, great way to like actually start being more social. Yeah, it helps kids. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because there's a, something in common right there in front of them. They see it. They okay. So it's not as awkward to yeah. walk up something and yeah. become friends. So it's great friend friend maker. Some of those kids that are all socially awkward or you know, aren't particularly. You know. Yeah, one hundred percent. So I gotta ask you. So you know, I know. Like, as a kid, we all play. You know, we're all gamers here. So, what was your favorite game as a kid, or what was your first game as a kid? It had been uh, Call of Duty: Modern Warfare Two. 
Okay. So I was oh, like, that was the best. Yeah, so I was. That was, that was when it was the that was yes. when Call of Duty was peak, man. So I probably put like eighteen days in that game, like game time days, so like eighteen straight days, just not like eighteen straight, but like over the lifetime of that game, I put eighteen mm-hmm. real life days. <laughs> so some of my friends have played in more twenty, but again, it, it was a great way yeah. for. During the summertime, me and my friends can connect with each other. We're always, you know, yeah. talking, and it's a great way for also um, males because I think we have an issue now socially where it's, you know, a great way for us to kind of communicate with each other and talk to each other yeah. um, about our problems or anything yeah. like anything going on in our lives. We all, a friend group, we can do that online. Absolutely. And stay connected. Anything going on in our lives, we can talk. I've got um, friends in Kansas City, Colorado, and California, and we'll all. Or, Oh, I'm sorry, not California, Oregon. And we'll all jump on and, you know, just, like, you know, catch up. Sit yeah. in there. How's the wife? How's the kids? Right. How's the job? And, you know, and, and, you know, just talking and having fun and relieving stress. Exactly. I think it's the biggest thing. You get that social interaction yeah. you know, with a group of your friends laughing like you're there in person. Right. You know, you hear them right from the mic, so... And you, you see him you're playing, playing a game, so yeah, you're playing together, so it's that team building, that bonding, everything. So that's another, you know, important thing that I'm bringing to the high schools is that the team building and the aspect of it too, and the competitiveness. And yeah, I think there's all great positives with having an organized sport, um, especially for esports too. Some of those kids, like you said, starting involved with any of the sports, so it brings that competitive side out because everyone has to be, everyone has that competitive mm-hmm. yeah. side to them, no matter what you know what what they're doing. So. Yeah, and also obviously the team building, the communication, everything. So that's important with jobs at working. You have to you know, communication is key. Mm-hmm. Esports, the same thing. You have to communicate what you're doing with your teammates, where you're at, everything else. So yeah, I, I tell people you have to have three goal or uh, three hobbies, right? One to keep your mind sharp, one to keep your body sharp, and one to keep your wallet sharp. So I ask people, you know, how many of those do you have? Sounds like you know the, the esports, you know, is a lot more of the mind sharpness. Whereas, and then you have Seth socks to keep you, yeah, uh, to keep your. You know, that's more of a hobby, really, because you know it's not, you're already getting ready to open up. Uh, you're already getting ready to open up some, you know, some kiosks and start franchising, and then you know. What would you, you know, sounds like you got, you've got a lot going on. Do you, do you go for runs? Do you? I don't. That's why I really need to um, get involved with the fitness yeah. stuff, even if it's running or just like working out. That's what I really want to do. That's my next thing to really get involved in is get that, get that underway. I feel like you need that. Yeah, um, yeah. It's great for your, so your does health. Does that mean you're going to put a running ball on, on the, uh, on the VR machine? Uh, VR is a great workout. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the kids really get a sweat on, like boxing yeah, yeah. and like moving around, jumping around. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There's kids that put a sweat on. So I see that as almost like a future, like a VR gym maybe. Yeah. Open up. I, they're already open up actually on the West Coast. Obviously, their technology's way advanced over there and they're always ahead of the trends. Get wave VR handles. Yeah, there's all kinds of workout and like boxing, like, do, but it's like it's fun. So it doesn't feel like you're working right. out. It feels like you're literally playing a video game, mm-hmm. but you, you know? Well, VR is interesting because there's still some advancement. It hasn't. There's some peak that needs to be hit before it really starts taking off. Because I agree, like the potential for it is, is almost limitless. Mm-hmm. What do you think is the biggest barrier keeping uh, virtual reality to truly start coming to what we have envisioned in our fantasies? Um, I think it's well. Oculus Rift just announced a brand new wireless. You don't even need a PC. You don't need cords. Nothing. Um, so you literally can walk around your house and it's VR and you're in the game. Yeah. And you have sensors. So if like you're in a room like this, you have sensors in all the corners and you just walk around freely. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's and that's coming out here hopefully in the summertime, if not later this year. So that's going to be like, uh, what's that, Ready Player One? Have you heard yeah. Of yeah. It's going to be like that. It's going to be cordless. You have controllers in your hand, so it's motion, everything. Yeah. Then you can walk around freely, no yeah. cords or anything. That was right. the biggest thing is the cords that's really been holding right. back and you have to have a powerful PC. In my experience, yeah. it's it's always been the hardware yeah. that is that barrier of entry in anything. You know, we we want smaller, we want uh, we, smaller, tighter, stronger. You know, color variants and you know options, and then you know those the setups for those things, the sensors are pretty can be pretty difficult to set up. 
Uh, yeah, like the one we have at the center, it's plugged in a PC. It's it's pretty easy. You just use like the controller, like map out, like wherever you're walking around. You just okay. click it and then set up like your your area where okay. whoever wants to track you at, and it'll keep you within those guidelines. I'm sure it's gotten better. It's been a few years since I've I yeah, it's, like it's advanced. Years. Yeah, like the graphics and some of the stuff. Yeah, it's it's really. I, I feel like the big one of the biggest limitations. I, I think core is the best way to put it. Is just like the, the limit of movement. So like if you if you're it used to be that you. You might be able to see it in the virtual reality, but you still have to use your pretty little controller. It's not quite as interactive versus like if you could actually walk. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of this stuff, like uh, I think in the West Coast, there's a whole like room that you just have your virtual reality goggles on. You go in and it's like you have like a, your, your play, play gun or whatnot. So you, you go in and actually like it's like an interactive room, yeah. virtual reality center. I mean, it's nuts. I don't listen to concepts, but uh, that, that's, that's where it could go. So I feel like a big bridge that needs to be done is like having not being limited by an area, not being limited to just being plugged in, not being limited to where you can move, but being able to just truly like freely go around. And it sounds like Oculus, you know, yeah. they're on the right track. Right. The hamster wheel, that's what you need. Yeah, almost like a, a treadmill kind of right. thing where you can like run on or, or track you, like something like that. Exactly. That'd be, that's yeah. great. That way you can just like literally stand there, but like it'll track your movement with your mm -hmm. feet. So like you start walking to the left, it'll right. walk you to the left and you're yeah. like really just standing in place or something like, like that. Jumping, like tuck and roll. Yeah. So what do you do for fun, man? It sounds it's like fun. you just work. Um, <laughs> I think we mainly play video games at night. Yeah. So that's really, that's, that's my fun. Time. So then the, the, it sounds like both businesses are kind of tied to passions or, or interests. Yeah, right. yeah, and just like the business, like you never know, like the Pittsburgh Knights. So they're with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Like went up to Pittsburgh, went to their office, Pittsburgh Steelers office. And the conference rooms were named after the Super Bowl championship. So you know, just experiencing some of that stuff just keeps yeah. it going. It keeps me going. It's because right. you never know who's going to send you an email. It's like with American Esports, those investors contacted me. Um, you know, they, the, the only awesome. reason they found out about me too is from a WJAC article. Okay. That they wrote about me. Right. So, like any publicity, that's another advice to any business. It doesn't matter where it's from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, so what, things bad exactly. Things. Anything you do, like a podcast or anything, doesn't matter because you don't know who's going to see it. Yeah. It only takes that one person to see it, like in my case, a WJC article. Um, you know, they found out about me and sent me an email if you're interested. And boom, here I am today you know, with the American Esports. So, nice. that leads me to the next. We're really expanding too, so we're franchising the gaming center. So, we're looking to open up another location in Greensburg. Um, and then eventually Pittsburgh, probably later this, I would say probably next year, early next year, yeah. if not sooner. Um, they we're always, they're looking to have a corporate office, like 15,000 square feet to be in the arena in Virginia. Um, and we're also working with some big universities, um, right now. So nice. Now you said you work with the St. Francis. Do you know if there's any other local, uh, local colleges that are, um, I've been reaching out to some local, local schools. Like I said, once one gets on the train, right. I think they're all going to follow because it's a great recruiting tool. Right. And that's what St. Francis, you know, really emphasizes. It's a great marketing thing mm -hmm. for them, bringing the kids, taking them for a tour. Oh yeah, we have an esports center. And they also recognize that, okay, all these kids are playing video games in their dorms. Yeah. Let's not make it so isolating. Let's exactly. bring them. So they want to have something in the common area where it's set like six, yeah. six stations where yeah. the kids can go in their little common area and they all can game and interact with each other and have fun. And, right. You know, so that's the yeah. biggest. Thing. It adds a lot to the, the student life. Yeah. <clears throat> because then they, they can have weekly tournaments yeah. and, you know, it, it really makes Meet new it, people. Like I said, it just right. goes around a circle too. They're making new friends now through it. So it's a great way for some college students from right. another state to come in here and join mm -hmm. the esports program. And there you go. You have a friend pool that you can pick from now they all have a common interest and a passion right. so I, I know whenever my well, my brother and his friends came over we'd set up i think we'd have like we'd have two rooms going because we were playing halo at that time i'm calling like halo <laughs> not, not halo yeah. 2 not halo 3 halo yeah, so you right. had like the four quadrants in the screen and you're all kind of huddle around this you know this very small tv screen and then You've got another station going on in the basement with another TV. So you've got eight kids playing playing a, uh, a on a local server where they're. Yeah. I mean, but you know, kids are yelling at each other. You're looking at my screen. I'm not looking at your screen. Oh yeah. What's up? Uh, yeah. That, that was that was always the argument, man. We're looking at screen cheer. Screen, screen cheer. Screen cheer, screen cheer <laughs> man. Yeah, that was a good. Those were the bad. Those yeah, the split screen days. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. But it's interesting. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's a great point because that was like, that was a ton of fun. That, that was, was one of my favorite parts about it. Is you could like just talk, you know, talk shit to your friends and just, oh, it's awesome. But it, it, it went away from that because we got like live, you know, Xbox Live and all that stuff was now everybody was just online and there's no interaction just over a voice. You're kind of coming for a full circle. You're coming back around to the Senate yeah. so that people can have that interaction again, those tournaments. And, and that's why the, the birthday parties have been really successful. The parents said like a lot of the kids are bringing, you know, their friends will bring their TVs yeah. and Xbox over to our house and mm-hmm. in the basement. They've like multiple parents have told me that. These kids are doing this now. They're literally just going to their houses to play video games. Yeah, yeah. In person, Take my Xbox other, you know? with me. Yeah, because yeah. it is. It's it's fun when you're around people doing it. You yeah, start, like it's it's awesome. It's awesome. So like even from a networking perspective, like kids are start to you know understand uh, Wi-Fi up, Wi-Fi down. You know, internet rates, networking. Yeah. Where where's all this? You know, setting up a system, and so. Those you know those types of jobs right aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah, now, I got a question because I, I think there's still a kind of a negative stigma around this kind of thing like uh, gaming, especially from the older generation. They think, ah, oh, you're just wasting the time on uh, esports or whatnot. How would you overcome that that perception, or or how? Do you see that perception? What going yeah, I think lately way? now, in the past probably two three years, there's been an industry boom. Um, then it's only going to grow here in the next few years. So there's going to be a lot of job opportunities in computer science. And mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people that play in high school esports or, and go to, you know, even colleges are STEM students. Yeah. So these are smart smart kids. But again, they have free time. I mean, we'd rather have them play video games than going out here on the streets and right. in, in trouble or something. So, And I know I read an article on it was a few days ago from Oxford University about um, video games and you know, kids and like, depression and all that it's no correlation between it and this is like the very first like real study where parents and caregivers actually gave feedback not just you know the kids themselves yeah so no anger issues or anything so it's not directly related to video games um and that was really the biggest you know negative impact on games was oh wasting too much time yes and it's also the kids the violent video games are really bad for them they're gonna you know, do all these things but this is just not the case with that that's one of the Big biggest articles that came out that recently just came out, so yeah, that really helped. And like I said, I think the industry there's going to be a lot of job opportunities. So with American Esports, we're going to be starting an academy. 